to speed in. Three, two, one. Quiet on the set, everybody, and we're rolling. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Court Rutnowski, of, uh, publisher of Yankee Tea News, co-sponsored by our good buddies of the Greenwich Stanford Tea Party Patriots. And I'm guessing this is number 56 at this point. So I just want to do a quick rundown on what we're going to go over tonight. So Putin's tears. Does he have something to cry about? Putin's got a lot to cry about. Lawyer pays for Hunter's back taxes, two million bucks. Faux President Biden is giving American sovereignty to the World Health Organization, but we can stop him. Uh, election fraud by a thousand cuts. Let's just say a picture is beginning to emerge about election fraud. Sneezing up a storm in Connecticut. Oh, yes. And Connecticut is to become the world capital for abortion. It's coming. Candace Owens makes Black Lives Matter cry. So sad. Bill Gates is selling his germs. Wouldn't we all like to buy some of that? And that's this. Uh, golden passports. The FDA says to treat COVID like a flu. This should insult everybody. Then we have Connecticut Comedy of the Week, Cindy Harity, which sets off a whole other discussion. And then we have our calls to action. And I'll get into those. So let's start with Putin's tears. Uh, today was the... Uh, anniversary of the victory over uh, Germany by uh, the then Soviet Union. And so they put on an awesome display of military power, and then Putin gets up and makes a speech. Now, what I read about was how he was, I don't know, in a weird way, wistful, remorseful, if Vladimir Putin can be those things about what happened in the Donbass region starting in 2014. You know, for people who are finding, finally tuning in to what goes on in this region, 2014 marks the important starting point of a series of conflicts that have uh, persisted up to this time. Now, the nature of Russia's involvement in this is still a little suspect, but the official version is to look at Russia as sort of an observer of what happened in the eastern part of Ukraine. So in the speech, apparently, he said, what a shame. I wish, you know, we just, we just couldn't really do anything. Because honestly, Russia's first, first impulse would be to settle it peacefully. So OK. Meantime, a friend of mine had told me, and I have not been able to confirm this, that in the speech, he also said that they would stop bombing Ukraine. So I don't know how long that's going to go on for, but those are the, the claims. In addition, people were observing that, again, Putin does not look very healthy. He's showing um, his shakiness. He doesn't walk right. So you have to wonder. Now, there's another story that he's going to go under surgery in a couple of weeks. For three days, uh, someone else will be in charge of Russia while he's recovering. So that's another piece of information to consider. So that's that part. Now, the next story, this one is sweet. All right, you gotta face it, Hunter Biden has got all kinds of friends in all kinds of places. So he's an entertainment and publishing lawyer. Let's see, what's his name? Kevin Morris. So Kevin Morris reportedly paid off over $2 million of, you can love the phrase, sugar brother. Sugar brother Hunter Biden's delinquent taxes. So, uh, you know, how does this kind of stuff happen? You know, I just find it amazing. But it'll be posted. You get to read about it. Now, this is a much more grave concern. As I noted here, fake President, fake President Biden setting to take away our, our sovereignty in a very serious way. At this point, it's a proposal. But the article, uh, at least the part of the article that I read, there was another segment that I missed, um, explains but doesn't explain the mechanisms by which Biden's proposal would be enacted wherein the World Health Organization 
is given the right to declare a public health emergency in the United States, wait for it, on a whim, if so much as the director has an opinion about a health crisis in America, he would be given the power to impose it on America. I think Americans feel that this is definitely not right. The terms and conditions are entirely dictatorial and have nothing to do with real public health. So um, we're going to be looking into this more closely, and it's up to you people to do the same thing, because I suspect that there's going to have to be a fight to stop this. So moving on to the next thing. All right. Election fraud by a thousand cuts. Uh, first up is the documentary that just came out, 2,000 Mules, that was done by Dinesh Souza. But we forget also that almost at the same time, there's a similar documentary by Molly Hemingway called Rigged. And it's a, there's a book by the same title as well. So these are um, two different groups coming at this fraud from different perspectives. The let me just deal with the first part first here. And that is, of course, as happens with these things which are very important, suddenly the left jumps in, the fact checkers suddenly show up, and they have all these rebuttals. The problem is that the same rebuttals. They don't address the real issue. They, they kind of step over the main message. And uh, I've, one thing I found, just give me a minute, which I think beautifully sums up their approach. Uh, just to read this briefly, you are correct. What is being pushed as refutations are essentially the Bart Simpson defense, which is, I didn't do it, nobody saw me do it, and there's no way you can prove anything. So you will find those same three points repeated in various ways, whether it's AP, PolitiFact, Fact Checker, or whoever. And the other point that people made is that it's remarkable how they all say the same thing. There's no real independent thinking when it comes to these so-called rebuttal experts. So they're blowing smoke. We know fraud was committed. And um, wow, I just, so it's, it ain't over, folks. So just to make the point about a 1,000 cuts, one of the things that's becoming clear here is that one of the ways in which the Democrat Party perpetrates election fraud is they do it a little bit here, a person doing this, a uh, poll moderator doing this, registrar doing this, just a bunch of tiny little actions all over the place which add up to a, a total picture of fraud. And only now are we beginning to sort of peel back the layers and able to um, assemble a picture that puts all of this together. And I will say that we're just in the beginning of it. Next. Okay, da, 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 da. three Connecticut cities are on the list of allergy capitals in the U.S. How nice. So, number 11 is Hartford. Bridgeport is number 9. And, no, oh, no, I'm sorry. Brid, yeah, Bridgeport is 11. Hartford, uh, New Haven is number 9. And Hartford is number 7. And so they look at pollen levels. Um, availability of immunologists and other um, aspects of receiving care. So you don't want to have an allergy in Connecticut, okay? Just saying. <coughs> Meantime, the other hot issue, we've seen how people have gotten in front of the Justice, Supreme Court justices' houses protesting, and fake President Biden and his White House have no problem with them doing it. But what happened January 6, of course, is a whole other story. But it's still the same MO. So um, there's a lot of uh, evolution. The place I want to start, especially since we're talking about overturning Roe v. Wade at the federal level and devolving this issue back to the states, the, um, it was actually uh, Bill Maher on his show who made the disclosure, shock and amazement. When you look at the abortion laws in Europe, they are far stricter than, any of the, than anyone here in the U.S. And you have to add, and then if you start looking at other countries, Africa, Asia, forget about it. So 
Um, you know, America's standing in the world when it comes to abortion is incredibly permissive compared to other countries. So it only makes sense that people take a closer look at this from a global perspective. And um, in Connecticut's case, they keep using the phrase safe harbor. They want to make Connecticut a sanctuary for abortion. Uh, it's also pointed out that historically, Connecticut used to have a ban on abortion, but then the changes of the 60s and 70s caused them to do a, quote, 180 on it. What do we have in front of us? I think the most dis disturbing part in reading through this is that, um, I want to put this, the state has directed individuals I direct law enforcement in Connecticut to refuse to cooperate with any law enforcement agency involved in any investigation relating to abortion. Now, to make this kind of blanket statement seems highly questionable because you can have any particular situation where the issue of abortion may be tangled up in other legal considerations. So I don't think it's very smart for them to do that. In any event, it's, um, the other point, and I, this article here made it interesting, by Dr. John, we'll have the link up. Overturning Roe will make abortion subject to real democracy. And I think that's a fair statement. Just two quick points before I move on to the next subject here. The first is that think of taking 100 women who are pro-choice and 100 women who are pro-life of childbearing age. Over time, who's going to have more children? Obviously, those women who are pro-life are going to have more children. As a result, over time, the population shifts more in the direction of being pro-life because there'll be fewer children around to carry on the pro-choice example. So I feel comfortable in making the prediction there'll be a firestorm over this, but this is going to die out a lot more quickly than you think. So that, that's my take on that. Meantime... All right, Candace Owens, God bless her. She made Black Lives Matter cry. To be more specific, the founder, and a woman named, um, I think her name is Patrice Colores, C-U-L-L-O-R-S. Uh, Candace actually went to one of these, you know, $2 million homes that uh, this woman had bought with BLM funds, knocked on the door and said, hi, I'm doing a documentary. I'd much like to ask you a few questions. Well, of course, Ms. Calores freaked out and tried to uh, get help. So she, um, after Candace left, she made a video talking about how terrible Candace was, etc. And she was none of that. Candace made her own video, and then they actually taped what happened at the door so they can show that Candace was perfectly polite. But then the best part was when this uh, Calores woman started uh, doing fake crying in front of the camera about how she felt so unsafe and oh, violent, and this is so unacceptable. She said unacceptable so damn many times. Anyway, I just want to point out that this is the female version of uh, tactics that Stalin pulled during World War II. And we'll save that for later. So moving on, number eight. Ah. Bill Gates would like to say it was germs. Uh, more specifically, germs, of course, refers to an acronym. The acronym is Global Epidemic Response and Mobilization System. Uh, it's a simulation system, but it's also meant to be a real uh, system for imposing um, authoritarian measures in the event of a public health crisis. So he's come up with a package uh, for all of this. And I'll just say, Bill, go home. Go play with your girlfriend. You have enough money. You can wipe your ass with $100 bills. Leave us alone. Okay? And um, he justifies it saying that if you think in terms of a global fire department, this is like, uh, you know, it's like that. It's just, it's silly. The link is up there. Have a read. This is interesting. The, the elite will use their golden passports to leave the country. Now, every 
country outside America has some kind of a deal where if you plunk down some money, they'll give you dual citizenship in their country. The one that's the most interesting is Portugal, it turns out. Portugal has set the easiest terms for dual citizenship. <laughs> um, I just want to see if we can take a second to find it here. Um, yeah, so um, uh, Portugal will give you a five-year residence permit for $200,000, visa-free travel to 26 countries in the European Union, um, and an average of seven days a year stay in Portugal, and then you can reapply for full-time citizenship. So that's one of many examples. And so if this country is really going to fall apart, you're going to see a lot of that going on. And this one quickly, which is really, really annoying. The FDA says now, now, Americans should treat COVID like the flu. Uh, there's just one problem. In an October of 2020, Fauci had said to Donald Trump that the COVID is not like the flu. All right. And the other deep, dark, dirty secret is the current COVID test, the antigen tests. They make it clear that they can't tell the difference either between COVID and the flu. It's disgusting. And finally, our communist of the week, Connecticut Commie of the week, Cindy Harity. Um, I have a funny feeling that if Cindy were investigated, she's an, an organizer and she's a negotiator for the Connecticut, for the Communication Workers of America, excuse me, Local 1298. These communication worker unions, I'm willing to bet, are willing to bet are hotbeds of communism. So, in the meantime, I just my last comment is I want to announce here the formation of a petition drive to um, push back against the illegal acts of the state of Connecticut concerning the next election. They uh, have pa pa passed a fraudulent bill allowing a fraudulent election to take place on the basis of um, absentee ballots and mail-in ballots. You'll be hearing more about it, but it starts here. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.